What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be taking you through the whole process of draining and filling the coolant on your fifth gen 4Runner. All right, so the 1GR FE motor in the 5th Gen 4 is a fantastic motor. You'll get plenty of life out of it if you keep up the maintenance. Unfortunately, one of the things that typically goes on these motors before anything else is the water pump. So maintaining your cooling system on the 5th Gen 4 is very important. Toyota recommends that you change the coolant on the 5th Gen 4 every 100,000 miles and then every 50,000 miles after that. There is a lot of different info on the internet on how to properly drain and fill the coolant on the 5th Gen 4 Some people will tell you to drain out a gallon, basically replace the gallon. Some people will tell you to drain the radiator, which is basically a gallon, and then refill it with a gallon of distilled water, run the engine, drain that, and then top it up with coolant. This isn't the greatest advice because the capacity of our cooling system on the 5th Gen 4 is 11.1 .1 quarts. So if you drain out a gallon, or if you just drain the radiator and not the rest of the motor, put water in it, refill it, or drain it, then refill it with coolant, now you've completely thrown off all of the ratios of the water to coolant. And the fifth gen foreigner, you're not supposed to mix any water with the actual coolant. So if you do that, you're gonna change the boiling point and freezing point of your coolant, and you could damage your motor. The way I'm gonna show you today, we are gonna drain out almost two full gallons and uh, it's just the best way to do it we're going to be draining the radiator and we're also going to be draining the engine block this is the easiest and most effective way of doing it so let's jump into the process and i'll show you just how easy it is just wanted to quickly mention we are now on instagram at t4r.garage follow the page to keep up to date on new videos that are coming out and also to win free t-shirts that i had made recently i'll be drawing random people january 1st february 1st and march 1st for these t-shirts all right, so here we have all of our supplies and tools. We have a ratchet, an extension for a ratchet. If you don't have a big long extension like this, you can get in there with a 10 millimeter wrench. I'll show you that later in the video. We have a 10 millimeter socket, a 12 millimeter socket, and a 14 millimeter socket. These two sockets will be used to take off our skid plate. So, you know, if you have the regular skid plate, 12 millimeter, if you have the TRD Pro, it's a 14 millimeter. We have our Toyota Super Long Life Antifreeze Coolant. Do use the Toyota Super Long Life Antifreeze Coolant. That's what your vehicle calls for. Don't use any other brands, just use that. Uh, we have vinyl tubing, it's 3 8 inside diameter vinyl tubing. And we have a funnel. This is what's gonna help us get the air out of our system and also get our coolant in. So this is a great little funnel. I got it off Amazon, extremely good reviews, only $20. I'll leave a link in the description. It comes with all of the universal bits so you could use this with other vehicles. For our Toyota though, we're gonna use the blue and the green top. So that's what we'll be using. This is everything you need. I'll leave links in the description if you need to find any of this stuff. All right, so we're gonna start by popping our hood. Under our hood, we'll have this plastic piece we need to remove here, which will give us access to our radiator. So you can push these down with like a screwdriver or even your finger. Once you have pushed them down, you can pop them out. You can use a flathead screwdriver to pop these out as well. And just put them in a Ziploc like this. Great, and so with all those 13 clips out of the way, we can now remove this cover and we have access to our radiator here. All right, so coming down from the engine bay now, we're gonna come down to our skid plate. My skid plate doesn't have an access hole, but other skid plates will. If you don't have the TRD Pro skid plate, you will have an access hole here. And that will allow your tubing to come down from the drain plug, which is the yellow cap there. So you could run that down through your skid plate. If you have a TRD Pro skid plate like this one or an aftermarket one, you can run it out the side. I'm just gonna remove mine to make things easy. If you have a TRD Pro skid plate, it'll be a 14 millimeter socket. All the other skid plates will be a 12 millimeter socket. All right, so with our skid plate off, we'll put a bucket under here. We have our 3 8 tubing. We'll just slide that on under here. That's a nice fit. And we'll put the end into our bucket. Great, and then we'll come up here. We'll pop our rad cap. Make sure that your engine is cool before you pop your rad cap. Push down, turn it, and then you can pop it up. Just put that off to the side. And now using our fingers, we don't wanna use any tools for this part of the job, but using our fingers, we will just turn this until we see the coolant starting to drain down through the tubing. There we go. Did manage to drain just over four quarts. Once you are done draining, tighten up that valve with your fingers, remove the tubing, and we'll move on to the engine. All right, so this 4Runner here is a 2017 4Runner, so it just has one drain on the passenger side. If you have a 2010 to 2013 4Runner, you will also have one on the driver's side, but Toyota actually got rid of that drain from 2013 onward. 
because it's just a pain in the butt and it doesn't really benefit you much. You only drain an extra cup if you drain from that side as well as the passenger side. So anyways, let's just uh, drain from the passenger side here. So what we'll do is we'll pop these clips. I took my tire off just to make things easier to get to and also to help with recording. So I'll just show you in here where the drain is. Right here, that's where drain is. So there's a 10 millimeter up here and then down here is what we're gonna put our 3 8 inside diameter tubing on. We're gonna turn this counterclockwise and the coolant should start draining through this drain here. So if you do not have a long extension for your 10 millimeter socket, you can get in there with a short 10 millimeter wrench. All right, so get that 3 8 inside diameter vinyl tubing on that drain and use your 10 millimeter long extension or 10 millimeter wrench and just loosen it until you see the fluid coming down. We did manage to drain out a little over three quarts from the engine drain. So we've drained out the engine block. Now we'll remove this tubing and we'll use a torque wrench at nine foot pounds of torque to tighten this up. Um, if you're just gonna use a wrench, I just do it lightly or just a little bit snug. There we go. Great, and we can pop these back on. They just pop right in. All right, so we are now ready to start putting our coolant in. We've drained from the radiator and the engine block. We got about eight quarts out. Out of our kit here, this funnel kit, we're gonna be using the blue piece. It has this little seal on it. That goes in. And then our green one will go over. And what we'll do is turn it until it clips down, push down and turn again until it's nice and tight. So there we go, that's solid. And then we'll pop our funnel on here and we'll pull this up and out. We'll now start to add our coolant, our super long life Toyota coolant. All right, so at this point we did add a full two gallons to the radiator. Just be patient, wait for the bubbles to come up and just keep pouring. Now it does help to have your vehicle on an angle. So the front of your vehicle is higher than the back of your vehicle. This will just help get the air out of the system, which we're about to do. It's no longer taking any more coolant in. Our coolant level is right here. I have a little bit left in the jug. I'm just gonna pour a little bit more into this line here. And now we're just about ready to start the engine. What we'll do is start it, let it run and reach operating temperature. All right, so come into your vehicle, start it up. And what you wanna do is actually have your heater on. Make sure your heater is set to high. The fan speed doesn't really matter. Just make sure that it's on high. What this is gonna do is it's gonna allow the coolant to flow through the heater core and get all the air out of the system completely. All right, so bring your vehicle up to operating temperature. Basically in the middle of your temperature gauge, you want that needle to be sitting. Let it run like this for about 10 minutes. All right, so we brought it up to operating temperature there. We left it for about 10 minutes at operating temperature. We witnessed quite a few bubbles forming in the hopper here. Eventually they started to subside. I gave it a couple light revs, some more bubbles appeared and then eventually stopped. So we know we got all of the air out of the system now. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this little orange piece, we're gonna pop it in here. It's basically like a little cap. It's gonna seal off the bottom. So we can pull this hopper up, open up our reservoir. We'll just hold the hopper over it and we'll just pop this up. That'll empty out the extra into the reservoir. At this point, we can now put our cap back on our rad. So we'll just pop this cap off and we'll put our Forerunners rad cap back on. All right, so just a note on our reservoir here. When I started the job, mine was below the low level down here. So I wasn't concerned about emptying this. If you wanna empty yours before starting the job, you have three 10 millimeter bolts on this reservoir. Basically just pop the cap off, undo those three millimeter bolts, take this off, dump it out, and then you can start the job. But yeah, mine was at low, and now that I took that excess fluid and put it in, I'm just below the full line, so I'm happy with where that's currently sitting. All right, guys, I hope you found that video useful. Changing the coolant on the 5th Gen Forerunner isn't that difficult to do, and it will help prolong the life of your motor and the reliability of your motor. If you guys found this video useful, please like and subscribe. I hope to come up with a lot more videos, and I always appreciate your guys' support. I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye now.